Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another Fairmont project video. Don't worry, I'm not going to take the channel over with Fairmont videos, but this one has been much requested, and it is about my loud button, which is actually an exhaust cutout that I have on my Fairmont. Now, an exhaust cutout is a device that you can put into the exhaust before the muffler and all that kind of stuff. Mine is electronic, so you can push a button and bypass the muffler and everything and basically have a straight pipe exhaust. Push the button again, it closes up and allows the exhaust to pass back through that muffler and be nice and quiet again. So that's what this video is about. Now, I've run two different types of exhaust cutouts on the Fairmont. In this video, I'm gonna be removing the first one that I put on and I'll talk a little bit about why I did that and why I switched to this new type that I like a lot better. But first, let's go over the operation of my exhaust cutout. This is all you see when you look inside the car is this button. This is the button for my exhaust cutout. You push it this way, it opens. You push it this way, it closes. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm driving down the road, I'm stopped at a stoplight, whenever, I can open this or close this at will. Now I won't be covering the wiring or the installation of this switch in this video. I will be covering that in another video, but the wiring is really simple. It's really just power and ground and figuring out a place for this switch. What I will be covering in this video is the replacement of the old exhaust cutout for the new exhaust cutout and why I did that. This is my old exhaust cutout. It's a Doug's exhaust cutout. It was recommended to me by the guy that bent up the exhaust for the Fairmont. He said that they were reliable. They worked well for him for years and it did work well until it kissed the ground. So this, this part was protruding down and, and I hit some, the pavement somewhere and it bent this. The way this works, and I'll take this apart here for you in a minute, is there's uh, basically a flap that closes and opens and allows exhaust to pass through or close it off. The minute this got bent, that couldn't move freely, so it didn't work well anymore. So that's why I went to the design that I'm gonna show you in the remainder of this video. I've removed all the screws that hold this Doug's exhaust cut out together and you can have a look inside. It's really simple. Um, there is this, these spacers on both sides that are the same thickness as this flap. This flap is what moves back and forth so it can either be open or closed. And these are like little, little bearings that this rides on. Now I can activate this real quick for you to show you its operation. To give you an idea of what's happening when you push the button on the dash, there's this electrical connector. It's just a simple electric motor that's on the other side here, and it depends on which way current is flowing through it, which direction it moves. So it's either gonna move this way or this way, depending upon how current is flowing through this. I'm just gonna take a wild guess and use this as my ground, and this as my power. And now I'm going the other way, so I need to switch this back around. So I need to make that my ground and this my power. And you can see it opens up. So, and then you flip, then you do the switch the other way and this is what happens. Now this thing is limited by the inside of the uh, device. So in other words, when this comes into contact with these outer pieces, it stops moving. And this still works. But here's the problem I was running into. You can almost see this little ball bearing that, that this rides on uh, has sort of sunken in. And this one over here, well, some of these are rusty and not really moving all that well. But my main issue with this type, and this was really mostly after it hit the ground. It, things were fine until then. I had to go back in and bend everything straight and get it all to work again. But as the car was running, it was rattling like crazy, it was driving me nuts. So just, just sitting there in idle, you can get this. You can kind of hear what I'm talking about in this clip. Hear that rattle? That's what we're getting rid of. I don't like that point is, that's the main reason I switched from this style to the other style. But as you'll see, the other style has a much lower profile and does not extend below the vehicle like this one does. This is my new exhaust cutout and it works very different. So as you can see, it's got a very different profile than the old one did. And I'll see if I can get a light down in there so I can show you it opening and closing on the inside there. Now let's have a look at how this one operates when you push the button. Thank you. 
Now that you've seen the comparison between the two types of exhaust cutouts and how they work, let's see how this new one got installed. I don't want to replace the switch in the dash and all the electronics. Given that it's just a simple electric motor that's just getting this 12 volts here, I'm just going to reuse this wiring that goes up to the dash, cross my fingers and hope everything works. I think job one is really just going to be to remove the old exhaust cutout and uh, start fitting the new one. My new unit is an RRP, Race Ready Performance, uh, and I just checked the instructions and then the cutouts are reversible. Uh, so relative to the flow of exhaust gas, there is not a front or back, so I can mount it any way I want. Now that I have it unplugged, I'm just gonna remove this whole thing. And uh, well, I'm gonna claim to remove this whole thing, but the truth of the matter is, I really need to get the correct size wrenches for that to happen. All right. That works better, having the correct size, well, one of the correct size wrenches. You know what's cool about being at this part of the build is yes, I'm doing all these little annoying things, but it seems easy compared to like totally fabricating or redoing something. Even though I'm gonna have to do some fabrication on this, my downturn pipe, this pipe right here, I, uh, came up with an idea on that because I don't want to just shoot it straight up under the body of the car. I want to point it down towards the ground. I'm like, what does it seem like? It's missing a fastener. Well, look, one of these has already worked its way loose. Okay. Good thing I have new fasteners, right? And it's off just that simply. The old gasket seems to remain intact, so I'm just going to leave it. This is what comes in the box. I've got some new fasteners, as you can see, um, some wiring that can go down to the uh, motor assembly. Then there is the switch assembly, which looks extremely similar to the one I already have mounted in the dash, and a fuse. Now, what I have in the dash already has a fuse here. Um, it looks like the way these are set up is this is for a single, so you can just plug into here. However, there's two, so if you had dual exhaust, you could use the same switch for both cutouts. I, th I think that's the way it's set up. But I'm only using one and in fact I will probably just use this and I will splice in this connector so that I can just hook these two things up under the car. And we also have this gasket. Now for my turn down, which I wanted like the old unit, so I want to basically shoot this towards the ground. When I turn down I have to get a little more creative. Uh, so here is what I got don't need any of that. I couldn't find a turn down that I could just bolt onto a three bolt flange like this. I just couldn't find one. So therefore, I had to get creative. Just like we often do when building custom cars. You're likely going to have to make something. Therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, which is basically a blank that can go and cover up this hole. But instead of covering up the hole, what I'm going to do so I'm going to go in with my plasma cutter and I'm going to cut a hole in here to match up with this and then weld this turn down onto this plate. So cut this hole, put this on here, weld it together, and that way I'll have a flange that I can just bolt onto here for my turn down. So what I think I'll do is I'll just take this over to the vehicle and just mock it up to get an idea of where things are going to be. As you can see, this guy here has a way lower profile than what was on here. Come in like that. And turn down. Yeah, this can, this can totally be shorter. Let's just check the new bolts and see how they fit. Ah, they're fantastic. In fact, I think I will definitely use these new bolts. I want to cut this even all the way across. I think the best way to do that is to lay down a masking tape line. So I'm just going to cut it at that line. With the now we cut. I did make a good cut because this is fitting on there nice and solid. But I'm going to take it over to the wire wheel so I can get this all 
wire wheeled up so that it uh, welds on there nice. One more thing I'm going to do while I'm here is I'm going to try to bevel this edge. It seems that that is a good thing to do so that when the weld goes in it also fills uh, and makes a really nice strong surface. Not that it really matters with this. I could probably just tack weld this on there and it would be fine even though it leaked around the outside. So what? Uh, but I'm going to try to do a nice job because I like to practice my welding whenever possible. Now, try to center this up on this plate. That seems right. But when I cut this, I'm going to cut on the inside of this line because I don't want it to be right to the ragged edge. I'm really just going to make this up on here like this. I don't need this to fit down inside here. I can, but I don't think it really matters if it does or not. You can't just go with a plasma cutter and just start blasting through. I suppose you can, but they don't recommend it. So I'm going to drill a pilot hole first, uh, right in the center. Doesn't really matter where. I just need a hole big enough to, you know, get the things going. Plasma cutter. I sort of got a little wide, so there's going to be some filling in with the welder. Uh, but I think the first order of business is to try to get all this slag knocked down. Now I'm going to take it over with the exhaust cut out, bolt it up, and then lay this in place so that I can uh, tack it and I'm actually going to take this over to wire wheel and get that marker off but tack it down and then take it back off then do a full beat around the outside we can call it done well we can jump to the wiring if I've learned anything in my short welding career it's that the cleaner the metal you start with the better your welds are going to be And I want the nuts on here so that I know how far in I can weld. Ooh, and I can even angle it off to the side a little bit. So it's not just straight down. I can put this wherever I want. We need a welder. I'm gonna tack it into place. I suppose I should turn the welder on. Now I'm not going to weld around the bolt holes on this side, I'm going to flip it around and weld from the back side on those because there's precious little room in that area. Uh, so I'm just going to do what I can to try to weld around it. And I'm going to jump back and forth because this metal will warp as I'm working. Also I just realized when I was tacking it down over there I forgot to turn the gas on. That's why those welds were so ugly. Gas is on now though. Way better. Now I'm just going to fill in the gaps. <laughs> Toasty as it is, I'm going to put this up on here now. Get the right size socket, Eric. It's on there. Now I need to transfer this end onto here so I can connect these two things up. 
taking virtually the same path. Although this can come down here like that. And do both wires right there. Gonna take this giant piece of shrink tube and run it way up past all this. Now I've discovered that my crimpers are failing. I fixed it by doing that. Some of you might ask, Eric, why not solder? Well, soldering can work, but I've wired up this entire car and I use these connectors and I'm not saying they worked 100% of the time because they did not, but it's just quicker. And if you think about it, how many connections do manufacturers solder? Not many. They use crimp connections, which in essence is a cold weld. That said, because I'm doing it this way. Probably the best answer to give you. Fantastic. And that right there is one of the primary reasons because with these shrink connectors, boom, it's in there, it's done. That wouldn't completely seal up. I'm gonna have to do a little taping. zip tie just to secure that down. Let's see if we can hear it moving first. Seems to be working. Will they close? So that's just driving around normally. This is open. Yeah, I like that better. And then it's quiet again. Which one do I like better? Hands down, the race ready that I have on there now, I like that one better than the Dugs. Now, I got the Dugs on the recommendation from my exhaust guy who said it's the fastest opening whatever, and, and I don't doubt that, but honestly, I didn't notice any difference between the amount of time it took the Dugs to open and close and the race ready to open and close. I guess it's just a personal preference, but for me, the Dugs hung down a little too much. I hit the ground more than once, uh, and as a result, it kind of messed it up. Also, the Dugs, and, and I'll blame this on me for hitting the ground with it, it rattled, and, and that just really, really, really annoyed me that that thing would just sit there and rattle at idle. It, it just bugged me, but the Race Ready one, haven't done that. However, I did read on that style that the Race Ready is, with that throttle body type of plate up in there, that uh, sometimes the screws can come out, and I didn't read that specifically about the Race Ready version, but that style of exhaust cutout, 
and when that happens, that, that plate comes out and then you've got no exhaust cut out. So that's kind of why I avoided it to begin with, but I've been driving on this race ready version all summer. No issues whatsoever. Uh, but you need to know this, no matter what style you choose, they will leak. So you, if you've got an exhaust cut out, I, I've noticed it on both different styles. Uh, even this uh, race ready version, it leaks. Now I'm okay with it, it doesn't rattle, it doesn't really make that much noise, and sometimes when I really get on the engine hard, it will open up a little bit, but a little push of the button, it closes back up and quiets down. So I've gotten used to it, I like this style. I guess it just depends on what your preference is. This is not sponsored, these are all my opinions, and even if it was, I'd still give you my opinions. But I'll put links in the description to both the Dugs and the Race Ready versions, and any other information that might be useful to you as far as this goes. As I stated, I'll cover the wiring and everything in a future video. It's not hard, it's just power and ground and find a place to put the switch. That's it, so it's, it's a pretty easy setup, but as I said, we'll cover this later on down the road. Additional information down in the description, if you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you head to airatthecarguy.com. Also linked in the description, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all those things that help make a living, and also ring the bell, you want the notifications, you know how to know when I'm posting new videos. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you very much for your time and watching. I will see you next time. Greetings video. <laughs> Greetings videos. <laughs> Greetings video. <laughs> I did it again.